I want the top table. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. The Mirror reports how panicked Harry's wife is cozying up to Hollywood pals from thank you notes to gifts. Harry's wife is said to be cozying up to her Hollywood pals with gift baskets and thank you notes as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex plan their comeback strategy. Ah, they continue to plan it, do they? How interesting. Harry's wife has been going above and beyond in an effort to make her way to Hollywood's very top table. As you'll understand, trying to get to that point is a particular attraction to a narcissist because getting to such a prominent position enables her to have a more easy method of controlling people, that it enables her to draw more fuel. It allows character traits and residual benefits by virtue of extended fame, and therefore her narcissism is driving her, urging her, compelling her to seek out that top table within Hollywood. It doesn't matter to her that she hasn't got the ability or skill, or intellect, or talent that goes with it. All that matters is for her to be able to sit at that top table. And her narcissism tells her that she is entitled to be there, that she belongs there, that that is where she is at home. The former Suits actress has been working with her new team to brainstorm ways to make new A-list friends in her new home, in Monte Shitshow, California. The Bloy is part of her and Prince Harry's plan to make a comeback in Hollywood, following reports of their string of upcoming career paths, including the return of her blog, The Tig, and Harry's new Netflix documentary. After attending Yellowstone actor Kevin Costner's fundraiser last month, Harry's wife and Harry were said to be all smiles as they rubbed shoulders with their pals Ellen DeGeneres and Oprah Winfrey, who introduced them to Kevin. Sources have claimed that the event was the first step in their total image overhaul. Harry's wife has been trying herself, or rather, I think they're meant to write, write, tying. Harry's wife has been tying herself up in knots for months, trying to figure out a comeback strategy. And eventually, she agreed with her new team that their only chance of turning things around is to be proactive and sociable. Notice there how it takes her to determine as a strategy the advantage of being proactive and sociable not to be naturally sociable, because, of course, she has no emotional empathy. Her narcissism almost has to call her up and say, have you thought about being proactive and sociable? I think that might work. To which she thinks, gee, okay, I'll do that. She called in every favour she could think of, as well as using the influence of her new high-powered advisors. Harry's wife's convinced they've turned the corner, magical thinking, and are slowly but surely gaining access to Hollywood's very top table. Getting the seal of approval from Kevin, really, was there? After an introduction from Oprah and Ellen was a big deal, no doubt about it, they told Heat magazine. Harry's wife is totally in her element right now. As a thank you for bringing the royal couple into the elite events, Harry's wife has reportedly been sending off thank you letters and gift baskets. Don't be fooled by thinking that this is politeness. Her politeness is only generated by her narcissism for the purpose of asserting control over people. And sending gift baskets is just simply bribery. And this is being done as a way to genuinely cosy up to her new friends. It's not genuine at all. It's simple manipulations, albeit of a benign nature. The insider added, the cozying up doesn't stop when the cameras are off. No, of course, neither does the manipulation. Harry's wife at home, carefully writing thank you letters. I wonder if she's using her brilliant handwriting, a.k.a. cursive, rather than calligraphy. Sending off gift baskets and holding daily brainstorming sessions to draw up lists of new celebrities and events to target. 
For her, it's very much now or never, especially with the TIGS relaunch. Is that ever going to fucking happen? Apparently, it's just around the corner. If certain celebs turn invites down, Harry's wife's not going to let it discourage her. Thus, she believes that she should be at the top table, and she's trying to influence that outcome. The problem is, it might wash with some self-centred celebrities who might see that they've something to gain by being involved with her. But what about the general public? Are they going to be taken in by the rehabilitation of her image? Will the general public think to themselves, do you know what, all of a sudden I really do like her. Now I think she's a thoroughly decent human being. I completely misjudged her. I completely misjudged her with regard to the fact that she tried to make the games in The Hague all about her. And I completely misjudged her in relation to the fact that she tried to make the Dusseldorf games all about her, that she marched in front of veterans in an act of what was essentially stolen valour. I've misjudged her with regard to her behaviour in Fiji when she stormed out of a meet with various people at a market. Also, I misjudged her in relation to the faux visit that the faux visit which took place in New York City, where she sought gagging orders or gagging um, arrangements with children and turned up with a couple of boxes of old vegetables. I also misgaged her and completely misunderstood her intentions when she turned up wearing several hundred thousand dollars worth of jewellery and clothing to talk to a load of ch children in an impoverished area. Of course, I must have also misgaged her, people would think, when she cleared away the seats at Wimbledon so she could have a photo opportunity and evidently entirely misjudged her, says the public, when it came to her attendance at Uvalde. She wasn't being a ghoul, leveraging off the misery of others. She was simply being there. In, out of the kindness of her heart and being a good mother. What Harry's wife has to do is try and convince people that she didn't say that people in South Africa were dancing in the streets as a consequence of her marriage, akin to the way that Nelson Mandela, uh, when he left prison, or that she didn't uh, snippily refer to their accommodation as a housing unit and that she didn't tell Porky Pies about there being a fire in Archie's room when actually it was just an overheating heater. Furthermore, uh, she'll have to get beyond the fact that she pinched the 4040 idea from somewhere else and then didn't do anything with it. Of course, there is the lies told in the Oprah interview, the lie that she said in the court case where she had to state that she had simply forgotten the existence of certain emails, the ridiculousness of her Ellen DeGeneres appearance, her behaviour in Australia, purportedly throwing a hot cup of tea at somebody and saying, I can't believe I'm not getting paid for doing this, the allegations about bullying staff members, the New York supposed high-speed car chase, and much more besides. I've just listed there a number of things that Harry's wife is going to have to get the public to sort of say, do you know what? All of those things there where we thought ill of her completely misjudged her. And all of the other things as well. You can tell, can't you, that the rap sheet for Harry's wife is so long and so extensive that no matter how much she cozes up to celebrities, no, much, no matter how much she sends out these gift baskets, the fact is that while there might be a sprinkling of celebs that might be taken in by this, the general public will not be. They simply look at it for what it is, a cynical PR exercise being driven, as always, by her narcissism. She might want to get to the top table. She ain't going to find a place there. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.